My name's Carl Corkscrew, and this is my brother Jay. We're the Corkscrew Brothers. I'm Mr. Drinkson. Welcome to personal evaluation. Please, uh, take a seat. Hey, these are nice. Come on, we're gonna take one down. No, no, I need to sit down. I need to sit down in the seat. Hold oh, down, Mr. Corkscrew. Put it down. Oh. Well, uh, all right. Then just uh, make up your mind. God, what a view. Oh, got ants, you know. Those are people. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, good thing I didn't spray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what kind of testing are you two interested in? Well, for um, me and Jake here, uh, we, we got ourselves a little problem. Yeah. People think we're dumb. Yeah. Well, you, you know, um, uh, stupid. Yes, I know what the word means, thank you. You are? Uh, so you want to be tested to see that you really are. Gosh, he's pretty smart. Yeah. Well, he's got to be. I mean, he's got to go on. Oh, okay, okay. We're running a little short on time. I'd like to begin. Now, I have a series of questions here that will help us determine your, your level of intelligence, you know, both individually and collectively. <laughs> collectively. <laughs> Why would we need to collect anything? Yeah. <laughs> Unless we would scatter for it. <laughs> 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 All right, now, uh, this first question is for you, Carl. Okay. Okay, okay now, <laughs> Carl. Are you ready, Carl? Yes, sir. All right, now. Far away. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Carl, if you were stranded on a deserted island. Yes, sir. What would you do first? A, build a hut. A hut. B, build a boat. Boat. C, build a fire. Fire. Gee, uh, I guess I just watch TV. No, no, no. That's not. That's not one of the choices. Well, could we make it one? Uh, no, no, no. You don't have a television. We did it before we came here, and I should know stuff we don't know. Yeah. Well, I think you don't have one on the island. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, there's no one else on the island. Well, then I just take it. You know, we'll be through the back of the game. Oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. I would keep it. I know the next question for you, Jake. Uh, Thank you. Jake, now, let's Jake, I give you... Five cookies. Now, if I give you these five... What, what kind? <laughs> what? What kind of cookie? Uh, I don't know. This is all... Do I have cookie. butterscotch? No, no, it doesn't matter what kind. It's easy it for you to say, I'm what's got to eat Hey, I give you five butterscotch cookies. Now, I give you these five... The classic. What? Six of them. We'll give one call. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, hold on, buddy. Uh, if you make my chocolate... You know, the question here says five. It says five. He's probably keeping laughing for himself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I give you a, a six cookies, five hundred cash, one chocolate. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. I give you these five cookies. I take six, six, six. Okay, six cookies. I, I think we have to be quiet. This is for Jake. Yeah, sure. This is for Jake. Now, Jake, I give you these six cookies. I take three back. How many do you have left? Uh, six. No, no, no. I as I take three back. No, you don't. When it comes to cookies, stay here for the protection. All right. Now, let's just go on to the next question, please. What about the cookies? Oh, oh, your cookies are safe with me, Jake. I've got them right here. Now, Carl, let's pretend you only have one day to live. Oh! What are you doing? What are you pretending? How do we do? Yeah, you did great, huh? Yeah! So let's just go on, Carl. Now you have one day to live. What do you do? A, write a will. B, throw a party. Or C, plant a tree. D, prepare to meet my maker. That's not one of the choices. Will you stick to the test? It's the only choice if you ask me. Yeah. Listen. Don't you believe in God? No, I don't believe in God. Well, then where did everything come from? Well, believe me, you two are much too ignorant to understand these important, complex matters. Oh, come on! Hey, give us a chance. Oh, uh, well, uh, all right, I I'll give you a chance. You see, long ago, there was this big bang. Ah, big bang! We heard all about that on David Hartman! Sure! There's a big bang, and a bunch of squiggly things in the lake turned to fish, and then one day the fish walked out of the lake and grew hair, then they shaved off the hair and became truck drivers! <laughs> Jake, now this last question's for you. Now listen now, Jake. 
You're standing in front of a table, and on the table is a book of matches mm-hmm. and a candle. Mm-hmm. Now, suddenly, the lights go out, and someone yells, this is a power failure. What do you do? Um, let's see if the guy who yelled was the guy that stole our TV set. Let's see if the guy who yelled was the guy that stole our TV set. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a trick question. How could there be a power failure on an island? Yeah! yeah. yeah. We got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone like you too? I, you guys are imbeciles. We are. <laughs> you are so Oh wow! Boy, they get those test scores back quick, don't they? That's it. That's it. Out. Out. Get out of this. Out of the office. Let everyone see you guys again. Out. Not sweating you. This tree's not on the menu anymore either. Oh, excuse me. What about our cookie? I can't take it. I can't take it. I'm jumping. Oh, mm. and he believes in God now. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. He's got our cookie. Oh, yeah. Oh, My, dessert too? Betty, you've just outdone yourself tonight. Oh, it's just a simple recipe. I hope you like it. Like it? I'm sure it's delicious. Thanks for having us over. Hey, we've been wanting to do this for a long time. I wish we'd done it sooner. I agree. You have such a lovely home. Dear, don't forget to leave a tip. I will, but they haven't given us the bill yet. So, uh, Bob, what do we owe you? Well, what do you mean? The bill. How much for dinner? We just want to figure out how much of a tip to leave. Yeah, the service was great. We're not a restaurant. We're your friends. You want to pay us for dinner? Well, of course. Do you take credit cards? Oh. Attempting to pay for a gift is really an insult to the giver. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Are you trying to pay your debt to God by being good? Or have you accepted God's gift? Amen. There's some food for thought. Well, we're going to see whether our brother Steve Richardson is on the line. We're going to ask him right now. Steve, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I certainly am. Hey, praise the Lord. How are you? You parked tonight okay? Yes. Yeah, I got up here a couple hours ago, and they took a couple hours to unload me, so now all I have is time to sleep. Oh, okay. Well, we'll we'll give you a little time to sleep tonight. I'm still waiting to hear where uh, Tom Dobson said he got parked tonight so he can listen better. I asked him where he's at, and I haven't heard back yet. I always love to know where folks are sitting if they're in their trucks. Just kind of makes me remember when I was sitting out there too, and uh, never know. One of these days, somebody will tell me they're at a certain shipper, and I'm going to say, "Oh yeah." And I'm going to be able to describe the scene because I'll, I'll, have, I'll know that I have been there too. But the, not so much with those coils you haul around, Steve. I got out of that. I got out of that flatbed mess really quick. <laughs> it just was scary for me. So you do it, and I guess you do it well. Well, I'm still alive. So I'm still alive, so I guess I'm doing something right. That's right. I think I heard Danny's Storyteller Smith voice in there. Yeah, he is. Hey, yeah, you know, you know how you can tell when Steve's been eating chicken? How's that? His fingers are clean. <laughs> Come on now, Danny. There we go. Come on now, Danny. That sounds like, that sounds like a truck driver joke. I was going to be nice. <laughs> Steve, Steve Haller special. I was trying to be nice. Don't get me going now. Oh, hey, you know, nice. hey, been there, done that. I know what, how to get my fingers clean. I heard that. I heard a guy <laughs> say that. I heard a guy say that they was so poor that they go down to Kentucky Fried Chicken and lick the fingers of the other people. Oh, oh that's nasty. With that, we're just going to move on and get started. <laughs> Thank you for that picture that probably won't leave my mind the rest of the evening. 
<laughs> okay, Tom says he is in Denton, Texas tonight, loading in the morning. Good, I'm glad you'll get a good night's sleep. I hope we don't put you to sleep. But we're only here for an hour or so, so hopefully we'll we'll keep things moving along well enough. And uh, anybody else on the line? I don't know if uh, Todd made it tonight or if he's got himself tied up with other things, but uh, he uh, he stood in the gap really well last week there, uh, Steve, and, and uh, did you proud. Amen, and, uh, amen. Well, I'm sure he'll yeah. be on here. You know, this uh, topic that you have... Uh, chosen i think sometimes you're probably better off just hitting your big toe with a hammer <laughs> i think this is a, this is a a conversation that uh i think is going to be uh quite exciting i think so i, I really do and i think educational and i and, and i especially because what the question actually was and what gets invoked in people's minds um right away when they hear anything even related to it uh because the question that was asked really isn't the question that a lot of people will start going after and answering and we'll we'll get into that in the second half and uh things keep going the way there are we'll have to install a third half but uh for now we'll, we'll have a first and a second half and i think we'll be okay with that um, is that to do man well welcome to uh to everybody that's logged on, uh, I see, uh, wow, we have, uh, Tina, we have, uh, as I said, Tom, we have, uh, stretches with us tonight, and he has stirred some things up with some questions that he's asked as well. And, uh, early on, Terry and, and Ron and Christiane logged on, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. I just say welcome to everybody. Well, listen, I, I always like to open up with, uh, Something uh, maybe on the little on the lighthearted side. Sometimes maybe a little more seri- more serious. Maybe an end time update or something like that. But tonight, it's it was unplanned and unrehearsed that the topic of chickens popped up because this first little ditty that I'm looking at is a, a story about a police officer who rushed into a burning shed to save a chicken. I kid you not. So the, the, the account, and this happened just uh, the other night, um, <clears throat> November, well, November 27th, so it wasn't that long ago. So this officer runs into this shed that's on fire, and it's a, in, a, is it Ossining, New York? I guess that's what it is. They said that uh, one of their officers responded to a fire at a shed next to a residential property, and that he removed two propane tanks from the burning shed. But then he turns around and runs back inside to rescue the chicken. Now I ask you, would you run into a burning shed to rescue a chicken? I'll take comments from all of our chicken drivers. Why not? If I have any of them, I'll settle for you, Danny. <laughs> Come on, Danny. Well, wait hurry, up. Now, hurry up, Danny. I got a I, comment. I hauled a lot of chickens, but I never drove a chicken. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> fair enough, fair enough. I just took a shot at it that you probably drove chickens around. You've been around long enough to drive just about every Yeah. Time. I think yeah. the last eight or nine trucks I drove were chicken trucks. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, lots, of fa- lots of fancy lights and all that stuff. Oh, the chicken <laughs> lights, yeah. John Noel is with us. Shane Bastris, Bastris has joined us. Welcome, fellas. I'm glad that you're here. Um, so uh, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, I'm, I, I believe in being kind to animals, so I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. But the truth is, if there was a burning shed and there was a chicken in there, I'm just thinking if he would have waited a few minutes more, he could have had a free dinner. There you go. That was my thought. I love animals, too, Wyatt. Thinking too? I'm right with I you mean, there. I, I love animals. I love roasted chicken. Yep. Barbecued, sautéed. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, God bless him for caring about the chicken enough to run back in there. And uh, oh, then there's another little ditty here before we get rolling with some of our questions. Um, this is a sign of the times. You know, um, in the Netherlands, there's a 69-year-old man who made a request, and this was just uh, today, as a matter of fact. He made a request of the court to have 20 years taken off of his legal age. Now imagine that. Now the the, the court rejected it. Uh, they said that uh, they can't they can't subtract twenty years off of his of his age to to just to reflect the way he feels. Because what he said was is that he 
he feels like he's 49, not 69, and that um, he petitioned the court because uh, he said he feels that his age imposes unfair limits, such as making it more difficult to obtain a new job or to get a mortgage. He says he feels healthy and youth and uh, youthful. So the court disagreed with him, of course, and and said that they they found no scope of legislation or cause to allow such a ruling to it change his age. Of course, you know, Mr. Rattlebrand is the guy's name is appealing this case to a higher court, and I'm not going to be surprised uh, somewhere along the line if he eventually eventually wins. I mean, things have become so crazy in this world. Um, the, the courts have gotten involved in things, and, and now there's going to be a thousand variations on a theme. Um, I, I think when the courts started deciding that somebody that God created in a particular gender decides they want to be another gender, that's okay. Okay, and then the court has intervened and said, yes, you can just be whatever you want to claim to be. Um, then it, it starts opening up the doors for all kinds of things just like this. You know, um, what 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 this guy is doing is asking the the court to nullify the laws of space and time. Um, they they've already defied so much of what God has created, and it wouldn't surprise me if some judge somewhere along the way someday has the uh, the gall to also uh, suspend the laws of space and time that God has put in place, and somebody will will get a chance to reduce their age. And uh, it just wouldn't surprise me. This, everything in this world, just about everything in this world, is upside down these days. So how would you like that, Danny? How would you like to be able to go into court and have them say that you're, you're 21 again? I think the guy's last name pretty much says it all, don't it? <laughs> Let me go back. Rattle. What was that again? Rattle. <laughs> rattle brand? Yeah, rattle brand. So, <laughs> well, if you brand him, he's rattled. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Close to rattled brain, but you know, I, I don't know what what gets into people's brains. And, and, and hey, Anita Sue Short has joined us, and Fred I did. Alice, I will say welcome to both of you folks for joining us. We're, we're actually going to actually answer a couple questions in a few minutes. We've just been having a, a delightful time looking at a couple of lighthearted. Uh, Stories, and we'll get moving on to something somewhat substantive here in a minute or two. Go ahead, Dan. Well, I, have, we roll into I, have to, I have to agree with uh, George Burns. I'm listening. Remember George Burns? Yes, I remember George Burns. And, and he, he actually sang with a cigar in his hand. Oh, sure. Wish I was 18 again, Wish going I 18 where I've again. never yeah. been. Yeah. Yeah, and that song actually made it pretty far up the charts for a guy who could not carry a tune in a bucket. But um, yeah, me too, neither. Yeah, yeah. You know who else was that? <laughs> uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, he played uh, Grandpa on the McCoys. Uh, Walter, Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan. Brennan. He had one of them songs too. He couldn't really sing, but one of these days I'm gonna climb that mountain. Remember that? So uh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can get a hit on the radio even if you can't sing. So, of course, come to think of it, there's a lot of them that do that. Uh, so nothing new there. <laughs> Forget I said anything at all. <laughs> you know how? You know how I get away with it? Well, how? Oh yeah, I run my own singing. That's right. You run your own singing, and then you're all right. That's right. Nobody yeah. can tell me I can't get up on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm looking forward to making it back out there again. I, I'm just hoping and praying the Lord. Wow, that'd be good. I really enjoyed my evening there. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind you making an open invitation to anybody that listens to this program to stop by. And the truck drivers, the truck drivers, if they stop at the TA and go in the TFC chapel, the chaplain will take them over to the singing. First Saturday of every month, if you are at... First Saturday Lodi, of every month. About, right? Yeah. Yeah, if a driver is at Lodi, right. and, uh, and uh, the, the singing starts at 6, right? The, 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 the uh, right. Opry, the, the Canaan Land Opry. Yeah. Um, been going on for, uh, what, three? 23 years. years. Yeah, 23 yeah. years, yeah. 
<laughs> 23 years is incredible. And uh, folks come from all around. They come and they share a couple of songs. Some play their guitars. Some sing the soundtracks. But everybody's there to oh. the Lord, and it's a great, great time. Uh, it really Saturday, Saturday night, what? It was a gal came, brother, but a violin, a mandolin, and a guitar, and a keyboard. And she could play all three of them. She was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? She what just showed that? up, you know? Yes. Uh, so anyway, the invitation's out there. Any drivers that uh, listen to this, watch this later in the week, uh, because we're getting hundreds and hundreds of views after the fact. And so uh, any drivers that are watching, listening to this, here at Lodi in Ohio at that truck stop, uh, the TA, uh, the and TA. get in there, get there a little before six o'clock, I'm sure, because it's probably about a twenty minute drive out to the Opry from there, right? Yeah, maybe, so maybe more like close to that. Yeah, but uh, so give them plenty of notice, and they'll run you on out there. Well, one of the questions that we we had perplexed me because I, I couldn't understand why it was being asked but my job really isn't to figure out the motive sometimes it's important to understand whether somebody is asking a question because they're trying to, to catch you you know one of those gotcha moments um, aha I gotcha kind of things where they're trying to trip up a Christian other times people are sincerely seeking but once in a while we get a question like this one and this was uh, the question was there any goal placed on Noah's floating ark, and all, all we know for certain that, that's taken is what's recorded in the Bible. We can only speculate on what, what Noah and the others <coughs> on board uh, besides, you know, besides uh, the animals they were supposed to take on. Um, we can just speculate. That's about all we can do. We, we might be able to assume that they took some simple tools. Um, somebody had to muck up all the mess, and that that leads me to what Danny, storyteller, said. Danny, what were the three things you said you would take with you? I'd take a broom, a shovel, and a pitchfork. A broom. And I'm willing to serve. That's right, because you were willing to serve. I love that answer. That was good. Hey, Christiane says the whole world goes nuts. Yes, it does. And uh, that's, that's, that's another good reason for us not to be conformed to this world so we can maintain our sanity because the world is definitely nuts and upside down. <laughs> so um, that's, that was an excellent answer. Uh, I love what Paul...